to complain about. Welcome back to Wine and Winds. I'm your host, KP, a marine biologist with over a decade's worth of experience working with screaming meepers like Joey. It's no secret, based on my channel analytics, that my viewers love sea otters. And I know that most of you love the sounds made by juvenile sea otters like Joey and Taslina. But some people might not know the role that those vocalizations play in a young otter's life. So today, we're taking a deeper dive into the songs of the sea. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you're enjoying the content, head down to the descriptions below for ways that you can help support the channel. As I've said in the intro, I know my audience loves sea otters. So let's start there. The famous sea otter, Meep. Well, now we know. <laughs> this vocal is unique to juvenile sea otters, as we see here with Taslina shortly after she was rescued. Typically, sea otter moms will leave their pups for periods of time while they forage for food. The pup will cry out for the mom when it needs it, like when it's hungry, just like a human baby, and it helps the mother to relocate the baby pup. However, this vocalization also attracts predators. So moms will quickly teach their pups to be as quiet as possible. As you can see here with our sea otter pup, Quatsi, who spent three to four months with her mother before needing to be rescued. Let's see if you can tell the difference between her and Joey. While Joey's vocals are similar to a baby crying, he is not in distress. <laughs> he was just separated from his mother at such an early age that he never learned to not make those distress calls unless needed. <laughs> And this is one reason why the Department of Fisheries and Oceans deemed him non-releasable. I recently published a video about how an animal is determined to be a good or bad candidate for release, and you can find a link to that video right here. So that famous meep is only one of nine unique vocalizations categorized by sea otter researchers. Others include contented coos, as well as whines, growls, and even snarls. And we're gonna get back to those after we talk about some other interesting animal vocalizations. Like my favorite animal of all time, uh -oh. the walrus. <laughs> Walruses are especially social animals. Their herds can number in the tens of thousands. And vocalizations are one tool they use to navigate their dynamic social structures. Roar! <coughs> Good. Sputter. Sing. <coughs> Good. Hum. <coughs> Growl. <coughs> Click. Good. Well done. Adults may snort, cough, or roar when establishing dominance, but they can also produce a variety of sounds like growls, taps, clicks, and even whistles. <coughs> Many of these vocalizations are actually used in courtship displays. Male walruses will make vocalizations both underwater and on land until they attract a female partner, or 300. Walruses have several unique adaptations that make these vocalizations possible. They have air sacs, which extend from the pharynx, as well as vocal cords. Mm -hmm. 
They also have very complex facial muscles that allow them to make a variety of expressions and unique vocalizations that are impossible for their pinniped cousins, seals and sea lions, who normally just do things like your classic barks or roars. <coughs> However, when it comes to vocalizations, my walruses have nothing on an animal known as the canary of the sea. <coughs> Beluga whales can produce an immense variety of whistles, clicks, and pulses which led explorers in this area to believe they were listening to some sort of arctic bird. But the beluga whale vocalization that intrigues researchers the most is something known as a contact call. It's a specific vocalization that a whale uses to identify itself to the pod, and it most commonly occurs between moms and calves. Now here's the kicker. No two contact calls are the same. Researchers where I work discovered that each whale produces a unique contact call that identifies it as an individual among the pod. These contact calls need to be learned, kind of like how human toddlers need to learn how to pronounce their own names. And studies show that beluga whale calves learn these from their mothers. And that level of sophisticated social interaction is exactly what has gotten researchers so interested in the contact call. I've posted links to these studies as well as additional articles if you're interested in learning a little bit more down in the descriptions below. But beluga whales aren't the only whales who produce sounds and songs. Baleen whales, like humpbacks, are known for their haunting songs. Honestly, the subject of whale and dolphin vocalizations is immense and probably worth its own video. So leave a comment down below if that's something you'd be interested in exploring in a future deeper dive. But for now, as promised, let's return to sea otters. Earlier, I said that Joey's meep was just one out of a handful of sea otter vocalizations. Another is the contented coo that an animal like Quatsi makes when she's eating. And as adorable as these sounds are, the truth is that sea otters are not typically a very vocal species. Aside from Joey, that is. But that doesn't mean they don't communicate. They just use a lot of body language for communication. Sometimes this takes the form of body contact. They often bump noses, tap paws, jerk their heads around, and of course, wrestle. While these physical displays and ways of communicating are important and effective, this video is mostly about vocalizations. So I'm going to leave you with a few more clips of Joey, Quatsi, and Taz, and I'll see you next time when we take a deeper dive. <laughs>